Hello, and welcome home to Downs Memorial United Methodist Church, a place where everyone is indeed welcome. We celebrate on this day your presence with us, this third Sunday in the Easter season. I want to invite you wherever you are, across this country, around the globe, yes, you, right where you are, to come with us, come with us on this journey of faith, Come with us as we walk this road together. I invite you now to this time of worship. Will you take a deep breath? Let it go. Join me again. Take another deep breath in. And let go anything that's hindering you from being present in this moment. Finally, take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in and hold it, hold it, hold it. Sigh it out through your mouth. Join me now in this moment of prayer. For the gift, O oh Lord, of this beautiful Sunday, your call to us to rejoice and to be glad about it, we do so. We thank you, O oh God, for the evidences of your love for us. For one more beautiful day, we give thanks. For the air, the breath, that is moving through our bodies, we give you thanks and praise. For the life source, the blood that is pumping through our veins right now, we indeed are grateful for reasonable portions of health and strength. For friends, loved ones, near and far away, we give your name praise. Bless us now as we moved through this time of worship. Help us to encounter you along our journey, wherever we might be, and remind us, as only you can, as the scriptures are read, song lifted, sermon offered, that you indeed are near to us, as near as our next breath. Bless us now. Receive this prayer. In the strong name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, the one who journeys with us always, the people of God say amen and amen.
I invite you now to join me for these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had seen indeed a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him, but they did not see him but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they had seen a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. 
And he said to them, thus it is risen, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what God has promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Here ends the reading. this third Sunday of Easter, we're presented with an opportunity to experience God on the move and to be on the move with God and an account that continues the mystery, the excitement of the moment, the new life that God had promised through resurrecting the Christ of God calling from lifelessness to life, this one who had said yes to service in the way after God's own heart. Jesus of Nazareth made promises to his friends, said, hey, we are going into Jerusalem to attend to the work that is uniquely ours. And you know what? There's a work that is uniquely mine. But in saying yes to God, that might cost me something. 
and it did. For on the Friday that ironically is called Good Friday, that young adult prophet from Galilee, as some have said, was hung up for others' hang-ups and found himself experiencing death-dealing forces only to experience the promise of what God alone can do. Are you ready for it? On this third Sunday of Easter, God has a way of offering the ultimate, nope, Uh uh-uh, not on my watch. And I don't even have a watch on. God has a way of canceling death dealing forces. It's amazing, miraculous. It's a source of disbelief for so many. We know the sting of this disbelief because we found ourselves reflecting on one who oftentimes gets a bad rap. You know exactly who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Brother Thomas. And you might know Brother Thomas with one famous adjective in front of his name, doubting. Doubting Thomas. This image of a doubting Thomas not only for the historical figure from two millennia ago, but also those who we label with that title are oftentimes those who are assumed to be ones who don't have quite enough faith, how we ought to replace our skepticism with a faith that indeed causes us to believe in the face of disbelief. But I like Brother Thomas, as you recall from last week's message. Brother Thomas, as my youngest sister is famous for sharing, was one who proclaimed in his own first century way, I need receipts. Brother Thomas said, you might call me doubting Thomas, all you wish, but I trust that if God is good enough and big enough and bold enough and willing to engage my friends, this same God that I know should be willing to engage me too. Talk about faith. If that's not faith, what is? A week later, only to encounter for himself the promise of the Christ of God showing up anew and saying, touch me, see me. I think that's what God says to us all. That's the invitation that is yours and mine. Touch me, see me. I see you, believe. Thomas was one who exemplified for us what an expression, what an example of faith that works looks like because of a willingness to actively wait, to wait in one's disbelief. You know, it's easy to believe when it's right in front of you but to believe in the face of all odds. Now, that's a faith that indeed can move mountains. And not only move mountains, that's the kind of faith that moves God too. And it just so happens that we find an additional account on this road of faith that we pick up on a road outside of Jerusalem, en route to Emmaus. For one day, a couple thousand years ago, two were on their way to Emmaus and found themselves engaged in a journey like no other. I imagine they may have taken the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus before, but they've never taken a trip like this one. This was a trip for the ages, because along their journey, they encountered one whom they saw 
but did not see. Isn't it amazing how at times I can recall some of the elders saying, people are looking, but they're not seeing what's really going on. Because here is one who has come among them, the Christ of God, on the road with them from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and yet they did not see who was with them. Along the road, the Christ of God asks the question, what's going on? Who are you looking for? What are you seeking to do as you engage along this journey? What are you talking about? What's going on? I imagine that's what Jesus was probably sharing and saying in this experience. What did those who were on the journey find themselves saying? Well, we heard it in the scriptures. Uh, they mentioned, they recalled the events of the previous days, the horrific nature of how the helpless Lord Christ was hanging on a tree outside a garbage dump in Jerusalem. They recalled how they thought this great prophet, one who was mighty in works, mighty in acts, mighty in service, mighty in directing people towards God's dream, would be the one who would deliver, who would redeem Israel. Jesus the Nazarene. They believed to be the one who was the Messiah. Sadly, this one was no more, or so they thought. As they continued along their journey, as they speak about the events that had happened, they found themselves all the more consumed in the basic elements of the faith that they would come to profess. Yes, they had hoped that Jesus of Nazareth would be the one who would redeem Israel, as shared in verse 21. Yes, they had even heard accounts from some of the crew members that, yes, something happened at the tomb, that Jesus was not there. And yet, although there was an empty tomb, Jesus wasn't there. So it was empty, but nothing was to be seen. Nothing was to be believed based in their experience. And what the Christ of God in Jesus was offering to them, for them, in spite of where they found themselves along their journey, was an invitation to cultivate a faith that matters. Because just as it is the case that folks can find themselves looking but not seeing, we can miss the very elements of the faith that we are invited to proclaim. Because what is faith but waiting in our disbelief at times? As it's been said, faith, right? is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that we do not see. That's what one author writes and shares to us from the scriptures, that it is this process of moving, even when we're not quite sure of where we're going, that we uncover the mystery of God. The two found themselves at a juncture in their journey for they had come to the place where they needed to be. And God in that prophet was continuing onward ahead of them. But they discerned to ask, to implore, to invite, to urge strongly that one to stay with us for a while. You know, it's a good thing every now and again to urge the spirit of God to stay with you. Because just as we saw in the scriptures, the same is true for you and I. If you invite God to stay with you, God will stay with you. How about I ought to say amen to that? Somebody ought to proclaim God's goodness and grace. 
God in that person, in the person, in the witness of Jesus of Nazareth, shows up, hangs out, goes home. Thank God they invite Jesus in. Goes home. And as they are at the dinner table, this prophet, this one from God, blesses the bread, breaks the bread, gives it to them. And it was in that moment that they were able to discover, Cleopas and crew, able to discover, oh my goodness, we see who this is. And just like that, they didn't. Isn't it amazing how the gift of faith is one that does a few things. For you heard me say, faith not only moves us and invites us to move, but faith also moves God. For as they were gathered in the breaking and blessing and passing out of the bread, they experienced the nearness of God's grace. They experienced the work of the prophet and they remembered the call that is our call always. It is your call right now to remember that it's only bread that is broken that can be shared. And we are called to be those who reach out, who stand out, who commit ourselves to working in such a way that those who may find themselves along their journey might experience faith anew, that they may have an opportunity to work it out while they're on the road. And I love it because the best kind of faith is the faith that's worked out on the road. It's the faith in action. It's a faith on the move. Faith moves you. And faith moves God. They were able to discover this. And this was important because new life, if we're honest, the grace that God affords us through the witness that is Easter, for so many of us, it's so outlandish, it's so uncommon, and yet it's so desperately needed that it always creates within us the sense of skepticism, the sense of doubt, a disbelief. How many times have you found yourself longing for things to be different only to find yourself believing that they couldn't be different? Hmm? How many times have you found yourself on the precipice wondering, Lord, have mercy. How are things going to ever get better? And at the same time, as you prayed and pleaded for things to be better, you found yourself doubting that they ever could. Easter, new life, it sneaks up on us. It encounters us in ways that we least expect. The new life that God intends for us oftentimes walks with us and has been walking with us the whole time. We just didn't know it. We just didn't perceive it. For we looked, but we didn't see in the deepest sense. What I love in this moment, what I love for the entirety of the witness that is to follow is that something absolutely amazing happens. After those who are on their way to Emmaus experienced a renewal of faith, they saw God anew in a very powerful way. They couldn't just stay where they were at home. They had to get up and go back to the place from which they had come. See, when you experience new life, when you experience grace, when you experience faith, it'll cause you to get up. It'll cause you to show up. It'll cause you to speak up. It causes you to shout out and say, I've got to go back to where I've come from because I've got to tell the good news. I can't keep it to myself. The song said, said I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. You ought to give God praise right now where you are. Come on now and shout for the gift that is this moment. Said I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. 
they found themselves on their way back, back to Jerusalem, back into the presence of Jesus's motley crew of folks, you know, the most uncommon, unorthodox gathering of prospective followers. That's how God always works, always works in the ways we least expect, the times we least expect to do the unexpected. That's God. They go back, tell the good news. We have seen the Lord. God showed up to us in a very powerful way. In the breaking of bread, we experienced God anew. The Lord risen indeed. They told the story. See, when you experience something good, you can't keep it to yourself. You've got to tell somebody else. While they were talking about Jesus, Jesus showed up among them and said, peace be with you. That's the next thing. You start talking about God too much. God will show up right where you are. And people will experience God anew. Where is God inviting you to show up and to speak a word of hope, to bear witness to the God that you know? God is waiting on the introduction that only you can offer. Because there's some people who will never know God more directly without knowing you. There's some people's first experience of God is through you, your witness, your faith journey, your experience, your lens for seeing the world and engaging along your journey. They show up, bear witness to the God that they have known, and God through Christ Jesus of Nazareth shows up anew, offers peace. And what I love in this case is that there's a bit more of the doubt and fear and amazement and exciting moments and joy and frustration that happens all at one time. For they experience life anew in one whom they've imagined to be lifeless and they found themselves unsure, uncertain of what to do. That's how new life is. It sneaks up on us. It offers us a way forward. It invites us to experience grace Abundant, life abundant, and sometimes we don't know what to do with it. That is the gift. That is the gift for you and I. If we experience God's presence anew, and Jesus said to them, reminded them, these are the words that I spoke to you. Did you not remember the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms? All these must be fulfilled to open your eyes and ears to the scriptures, to the witness, so that you might understand anew. For it's written that the Messiah of God is to suffer, is to experience lifelessness, only to experience the hope of life that God alone is able to offer us all. That's powerful. Because the next piece, hear me now, the next piece that you and I are invited, you and I are encouraged to experience is this moment. Jesus says to those assembled, you are witnesses. Hmm. Not a question. Will you be a witness? Not a prediction. You will be a witness. No, a claim. You are witnesses. This is a gift to be claimed, called, commissioned now, right now, for such a time as this. This gives new meaning to time because in that case, time truly is a present. You are Witnesses is what God through Christ shares in that moment. This is important because our words, our lenses, our sight, our faith, our convictions give and bear witness to what we ultimately think about God. This gift of being called and commissioned, of claim to be witnesses 
It's not just for us, but it's for the world so that the world might believe, so that the world might experience new life. What are our words or our deeds saying about God? Hmm? Have you thought about that? If the only book that someone were to read about God was your life, if they opened that book, what would they learn about God? Hmm? That is the challenge. That is the opportunity that we are afforded to live our lives in such a way that God gets a good name. It's although the two disciples who were on their way on that road to Emmaus did not recognize Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth recognized them. And if we are to believe that there is true power in God's ability to cancel death dealing forces, we have a responsibility to recognize that we have an opportunity to see and be seen just as God has known and been known and invited us to experience God. But that's not it. That's not all. Hearing that we are witnesses is not enough. And as a matter of fact, it's not necessarily good news. I mean, think about some of the times in which you found yourself hiding behind your identity, cowering, being ashamed of who you really are. Remember those times when you have given your testimony to somebody else to share. Remember those times when you found yourself wondering if your vantage point made any difference anyway. And how you are invited in this moment to claim with every fabric of your being that God knows who you are, God made you just who you are, and such a, for such a time as this, God is inviting you to be who you are because there's somebody who's looking to see God. There's somebody who's looking to believe anew. There's somebody who's wanting to have faith and hope. And there's somebody who's wanting to believe that love indeed, the love of God, is able to conquer all. There's somebody who's wondering if who they are is worthy. But I'm here to tell you, baby, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that who you are is beloved. That's right. Who you are is beloved. You're not some mistake. But you are one who is fearfully, wonderfully made and who is called in this moment to embrace the entirety of your identity. Because the road to Emmaus is one that you've been on to. What road do you find yourself on this day? Where are you finding yourself reflecting on disappointments, on your fear and uncertainty, wondering if things could be different, looking for God to offer new life for those who have been deemed lifeless. We're living in moments of great uncertainty, moments where literally the earth is crying out for relief, where citizens, those who are most marginal, are being impacted by global pandemic and how we are wondering how it is that we might find our way forward. And I'm here even now to remind you, to encourage you in the strong name of God through Christ, that as you continue along your journey, you can experience the gift of a faith that indeed works and matters. Because faith, as those disciples would discover, not only moves them, faith moves God. You are a witness. You are a witness. You are a witness. That's right, where you are, you are a witness. Tell your neighbor, you are a witness. Tell the other neighbor, you are witness. If you're by yourself, touch yourself, hug yourself and say, hey, I am a witness to the love of God 
and that great gift of canceling death dealing forces that God alone can do. I'm a witness to the liberating power of God through Christ our Lord. Amen. We give thanks for many reminders of the nearness of God's presence with us. We experience it as we move through our days. We experience the nearness of God's presence as we engage our neighbor. We experience God's presence as we walk along our pathways. As we prepare now for a moment of generosity, we give God thanks and praise that you are journeying with us on a path, not only of deeper faith and spirituality, but also a path of generosity that affords us an opportunity to continue the work, the witness, the ministries of this community of faith. As we prepare for this time, we invite you to give generously, to give up your time, that's right, your talents, your treasures. This is a moment that is filled with so many opportunities for showing up and offering. And so as we prepare for this time, we celebrate again one who leads among us in music ministries at Downs Memorial United Methodist Church. Would you welcome now Dr. Philip Harris. <laughs> to remember if we recall nothing else that we do not walk this road alone there are so many who come alongside us and encourage us in faith we invite you now to continue the journey to walk to walk forward in faith and right now to walk into your kitchen or your pantry. Join us for this moment of sharing in Holy Communion. So go ahead. We want you to gather something that is edible. Please get something that's drinkable. And we want all of you to join us together. So I will give you instructions once you assemble your items and lay them, offer them 
to wait on us because we're going to take it all together. Amen, somebody. That's right. And so go now. Go to your kitchen, to your cupboard, to your pantry, wherever you are, and gather something that is edible, something that is drinkable. And as you do so, I want to tell you, tell you something quite grand. On the night that Jesus of Nazareth was to make an ultimate sacrifice because of the depths of his love, his love for God and love for his friends and love for the entirety of the world. He gathered in an upper room with his friends and took bread. He gave thanks to God, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take this bread, eat it. My body, unfortunately, will be broken, broken for so many. Whenever you take this bread, will you remember me? I imagine his disciples said, of course we will, absolutely. He says, okay. After the supper was over, he took a cup, common cup, lifted it high to God, gave thanks, and then he gave the cup. He passed it to his friends and said, drink of this, all of you. My blood, unfortunately, will be spilled because I dare to follow the path that God has laid for me. Whenever you drink, will you remember me and recommit yourself to following the road that God has laid out for you too? He said, of course, yes. And so in remembrance of these small yet mighty acts of God through Christ Jesus our Lord, We're invited to offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Please repeat after me, Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. My prayer is that the Spirit of God will be poured out on you. Yeah, you. All over the world. And on these gifts of bread, of wine, of juice, these gifts of that which is edible and that which is drinkable. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ Jesus so that we might be the body of Christ redeemed by Christ's own blood for the world. By your spirit, O God, make us one. One with Christ, one with each other. One in service and ministry to the entire world until Christ comes again along that journey and we feast together at a great banquet. Through your Son, O Lord, Christ Jesus, your spirit, that great Holy Spirit and the church. All honor and glory belong not to you. Nope. Not to me. Mm -mm. Belong to God. Today, tomorrow, the day after that, the day after that, and all the days of our lives. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so by saying amen, amen, and amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, I invite you right now to pray in your first language. Whatever your heart language is, your first language, the prayer that Jesus taught his friends to pray. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us, O Lord, our trespasses as we also forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not, O Lord, into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. For thine, O Lord, is the kingdom, the power,
power and the glory forever belong to you. Amen. from the one who knows you deeply. The one who has created you for such a time as this. And so I invite you right now to join me in this moment as we prepare now to share in the gift of Holy Communion. What we're invited to remember along our journey is that ultimately it's only bread that's broken that can be shared. Only bread that's broken that is shared. And this cup reminds us that there are so many hands that go into creating the fuel for our journeys. Right where you are, lean in. We're preparing all over the globe. Lean in, are you ready? Are you ready for this moment? Lift high your elements. That's right what you have. Lift it high at home. If the kids are around, go ahead and lift it real high. If you're by yourself, lift it high anyway. Lift it high. And remember, the body of Christ is broken, given for you and for I, that we might be for the world the body of Christ. So take this symbol right now and eat it. Give thanks to God with a rapal heart. The blood of Christ for you and for me. Might we take? I invite you now to join me this moment of prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself for us. Grant that we might go into the world with the strength of your spirit to give ourselves in service to others and to your world. May it be so on this day and always. Amen and amen. I like that, Dr. Phil. Go ahead and one time for us. finding ourselves the end of our journey, and yet the journey is just beginning. I want to send you forth with a blessing. These words that might carry you as you move forward in faith. Might you go 
Go knowing that God goes before you always to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, above you to watch over you, below you to lift you up, and inside of you that wherever you are in the world, you might be an expression, one who lives, breathes the hope that is God's hope for our lives. What might that be? It's to remind us that wherever we are along the journey, God is always with us. Thanks be to God now. Go in faith, hope, and in the love of God through Christ our Lord. Amen.